in as much as the port is working 24-7. Some of these support businesses or businesses that are dependent on the port are not really geared towards that. Hence, you would have those high peaks when everybody is trying to chase the narrow window that is called normal business hours. We have then looked at saying, how do we sensitize them, make them aware that there is opportunity and business to be made outside of the normal business hours. I'm happy to say that we have seen improvement in this regard. The way we have measured this was working with TPT, we have then said, let's pilot the truck booking system. This booking system predetermines the number of slots available in every hour, and customers come and choose which slots they want to come and be serviced on. And uh, as we have done that, we have started seeing that the volume smoothing is beginning to look more positive. We're beginning to flatten those high peaks, and we're seeing an increasing number of utilization of the slots that traditionally would be off-peak or out-of-office hours being used, which is encouraging. And I hope that we are going to continue on this trajectory and get everybody to use those windows, because if we really do that, we are going to get everyone realizing that you do not have to come and queue for hours on Bayard Road. Rather, you can come at a time you are expected and be in and out of the port, which saves cost and make our port to be more competitive. We also have seen that there are things that we took for granted that the truck drivers ought to understand how to behave in the port environment. Our research has pointed us differently that people do not necessarily understand how things are done. We have then developed an induction program that is targeted at bringing on board the truck drivers to take them through what we assume was common knowledge, where we're going to train them and make sure that they really understand how to behave in and around the port. Our Maritime School of Excellence has developed a program which we really feel is comprehensive enough to bring everyone who comes to the port on board for them to understand this. Sadly, we have not roll this one out because of COVID-19 challenges. We had planned originally that we're going to put them in an auditorium for a day and, and have a session which would be interactive with them. But we have to change now to say how do you have smaller classes, social distancing, awareness and using e-learning platforms. So that has slightly fallen behind but we are recovering by looking at using technology to reach out to those drivers. We also really want to build a positive and formidable relations with the truck association or transporters association. We are aware that there's in the main uh, three groupings. You've got independent players who do not belong to any of these associations. We also have two big uh, harbor carriers associations. We want to have an all-inclusive approach where we can tap into their own experiences and uh, deal with their individual and collective anxiety to find ways of dealing with the situation. We are going to continue on this and make sure that as we progress and change for positive, everyone really becomes part of the journey. We will also based on the size of uh, those tracking uh, bodies, allocate equitable time from my office in terms of how much time should I dedicate to each of the groupings. But the whole idea here is not to isolate or sideline anyone, is to bring one on board so that we can have a shared view of how we can modernize the port of Devon. And we hope when we work with them, together with the induction of truck drivers, we're going to develop an intelligent uh, source of knowledge which will help us to understand who are their drivers, their history, are they in the, if they are non-South Africans, are they here with their valid work permits, if they are working with them, are these people who have been serial offenders? Right now we do not know that. A person, for example, can work for me today and uh, for whatever misbehavior we part ways, he goes and joins somebody else tomorrow and he continues with the same behavior. We don't have that intelligence. We want to gather that intelligence so that we can professionalize and raise the levels of comfort around 
ethics of people that we're working with and treat them in a fair way. So that is going to be another uh, intervention. The third one really was to say all of these things cannot happen if uh, we don't have a support of law enforcement. Here we have spoken to the city of Etequini and their police department. They have uh, gracefully embraced the challenge and they've got presence in the port which is meant to help uh, instill the adherence to law and order. And we really hope that this is going to be seen as a positive sign where we say we are not going to allow vehicles that ought not to be on the road to be coming to the port. There should be no vehicles with oil leaks because that is bad for the environment, unroadworthy vehicles which could cause accidents, and also just uh, adherence to making sure that all the major intersections in the port are being kept clear all the time. Nobody should park where they are not supposed to park. Also to look at issues of validity of roadworthy certificates and permits and to make sure that there's no overloading. That is going to be another intervention. We have already started and we're seeing positive impact from that.